cataractcoach.com. IOL Exchange with an open posterior capsule. This IOL optic has opacified and it must be explanted. So you can see small pupil iris hooks being used to expand that. Using a Sinsky hook to get under that erectus edge to try to free up the lens or at least get the capsule off the optic so you can do this visco dissection. This is a key step here using a dispersive viscoelastic to do visco dissection to help free up that lens. Plenty of viscoelastic. Come on, you know the saying viscoelastic is cheaper than vitreous. Now you can see the surgeon just made a very large incision there, kind of a uh, corneal scleral incision there at the limbus. And the reason is sometimes these eye wells, even though they went in the eye flexible and foldable, they can become opacified like this and often it's due to calcification. And that makes the lens very hard. And sometimes it's very difficult to fold or even cut it. And so in a case like this, there are some cases where you may have to just enlarge the incision and take it out whole. This acrylic type lens can even become as hard as a PMMA lens, polymethyl methacrylate. So taking this lens out in one piece and sometimes be the right answer. You may not be able to fold it or twist it or even cut it inside the eye. So there it is. The lens is gone now. Now it's time to do what? An anterior vitrectomy. Now I know you think, why well, didn't stir up the vitreous that much, but you always end up doing so. If the patient's already had a YAG capsulotomy like in this case, you're going to need to do some kind of anterior vitrectomy. Now you can also use triamcinolone to stain the vitreous, and that'll be very helpful here. So here's a Simcoe cannula going inside the eye, maybe flushing out some of the viscoelastic, but be careful here, you're going to get more vitreous prolapse like that. I tend to do these antivitrectomies through, ah, there's the triamcinolone, very nicely done. I tend to do these through two smaller incisions, a bimanual approach. So you can see how much vitreous there is. The reason why the viscoelastic was washed out is the vitreous won't be stained by the triamcinolone if the eye is full of viscoelastic. It won't be able to. So now, there you go. Look, I, as, we, as we know, two smaller incisions here. So two side port incisions, two parentheses being done here for a bimanual anterior vitrectomy. Another bit of advice here, keep the inflow pretty good. You don't want to have a situation where you're going to allow more vitreous to pull up. So you want the anterior chamber here relatively pressurized. Keeping the infusion above and the vitrectomy cutter below can be very helpful. Remember to triamcinolone will stain the outside of the vitreous. So you may need to go back inside and put more triamcinolone, but it's only gonna stain the surface. Think of the triamcinolone like putting sprinkles on an ice cream cone. If you eat the sprinkles off, you still have ice cream left, but no more sprinkles. Well, the triamcinolone is just staining the outside of it. The particles are getting caught up in that outer vitreous of the big wad of vitreous that you've got there. So take your time here. It does take more time than you think to get a thorough antivitrectomy. You can switch hands here to get full 360 access. An air bubble also is very helpful. Now you can show there is no more vitreous because the air bubble is there. And now the lens can be placed. A three-piece lens in the sulcus would be a pretty good idea in this case. And if you can, achieve an optic capture through the rexus. So there's that lens being placed in the eye. And so in sulcus placement, the lens can have a very nice long-term stability like that, especially if you can achieve optic capture. Now, getting the lens back over here, that looks good. The lens is centering up very nicely. And then you can clean up the remaining viscoelastic from the eye, maybe do a little more antivitrectomy if you think there's any more product vitreous. Certainly more triamcinolone can be used. So in general, we don't like to do IOL exchanges for patients who've already had a YAG capsulotomy or they have an open poster capsule, but sometimes you have to do it and you can actually achieve a very nice result. So we're gonna hear the air bubble technique being used to just to show that the AC is maintained, nice deep chamber, and there's no vitreous prolapse anywhere there. And so beautifully done here. At the end of the case, certainly that larger incision probably deserves a suture. Here, taking out that bubble for a temporary measure. If you do put the air bubble in the eye, don't worry, it'll resolve over the course of a day or two. Not such a big deal. And then there's a little more triamcinolone, just to be sure. Brilliant. Love watching the surgeon operate. He's a very talented surgeon. Thank you, Dr. Mohanta, for all of your great teachings here. And so now at the end of the case, let's just finish this up. See a little bit of interest there going towards the incision. You can see where it stains. And then, of course, the suture will go in. And we'll show you the post-op for this patient as well. So I like the, the taking your time method here. Being meticulous, making sure it's the way you want it is really the right way of doing things. And then at the end, again, 
uh, probably a suture for that larger incision there, at least in my hands. Perhaps Dr. Mohanta will do without, and you can close up the conjunctiva, and then I'll show you the post-op pick. Yeah, there's the suture. See, I like it. Nicely done. Looks like, what's this, a, a running type suture, perhaps? A little bit off our screen there. No, just closing the conjunctiva. All righty. Hey, works for me if you have a very well-constructed incision here. And then next day, post-op day, look at that. Beautiful result. If you have this case, don't worry. You can do it. I got faith in you. Bye now.